Um, I'd like to welcome all of you and thank you for joining me for today's webinar, which is aimed at helping you get into medical school. Now, I'm assuming that the majority of you attending are students who are interested in applying to medical school. And today's process is about the um, personal statement. So, you want to be a doctor. And one of the questions that you ask is how can you ace or how can you write a personal statement that lets you stand out? Now, as we talk about the personal statement and how to write it, if you have any questions, please jot them down in the chat box and I'll get to them at the end of the session. Now, many of my colleagues and myself are frequently asked by prospective students as well as their families about the admissions process into medical school. And basically everyone is asking, how can I get into medical school? Or at least how can I improve my chances in getting into medical school? Now there are a lot of steps in getting into medical school. A couple of these steps are very critical. One of these steps we spoke about in last week's webinar on the interview, which you can review if you join the website of the university. But let's take a closer look. When you apply, among the first things that you send in are your academic record, any prerequisites that the schools ask, and recommendation letters. When you open up the web page of any medical school that you're interested in, for example, in the European University of Cyprus, all of this information is made available for you. However, you're also asked to send in a personal statement, and this personal statement is a very big step in getting you to the interview. And the interview, as you heard last week, is a very, very critical step in getting acceptance. Both the personal statement and the interview are two very, very important steps in your path in getting accepted to medical school. Basically, both of these are the last hurdles that get you into your medical school. So the big question is, how can you stand out in your personal statement? How can you write a personal statement that will make the admissions committee look at you and accept you and invite you to come to an interview? In discussing how you can write a personal statement that helps you stand out, we're gonna do the following over the next 20, 25 minutes. We're gonna say, what is a personal statement? How you can help prepare to write it? What's the process in writing the personal statement? I'll give you a few tips on what to look for. And then I'm gonna give you the do's and don'ts. There are a list of do's and don'ts that you need to avoid. And more importantly, there's the bad list. We have been doing this for a very long time and there's certain things that you definitely need to avoid. And then just at the end, a couple comments about the cosmetics, how to make it look good. So what is a personal statement? Well. This is depending upon the school that you're applying to. It's part of the application process. Usually it's defined as one or two pages. It's a narrative account about yourself and you submit this with the application, very broad. What does it do? It tells your story. It, prevent, it presents your goals. It gives you a chance to reflect on your aptitudes, your maturity, your focus, and your capacity compatibility with the program. When I'm looking at you and I'm reading your personal statement and I'm on the admissions committee, I want to know, are you compatible with us? Do you fit in? It provides evidence of your writing skills. And I'm saying again, it's a very, very critical part in the admissions process. It's something that we look at and it's something that we look at very carefully before we invite you for an interview. It's all about you. This is the time that you write about you. And actually, you're telling us, why should we choose you? What is your personality? What are your strengths? What made you choose medicine? What are your successes? What obstacles have you overcome? Basically, it's a concise, brief description of personal experience or experiences and your reflection on how this experience either led you to pursue medicine or shows that you have some sort of character or commitment that is relevant to medicine. 
It's your chance to highlight your qualities, your specific qualities and experiences that tell us that you would make an excellent clinician, that you will make an excellent medical student. All right, so now you know what the personal statement is. How do you prepare to write a personal statement? Here, it's all about questions. And for the next few minutes, all I'm going to do is throw questions at you that you need to consider, that you need to think about before you even start to write a personal statement. And here are the big questions. How would I describe myself? How would others describe me? How do other people see me? How did I become interested in medicine? Why am I interested in medicine? What are my objectives? What are my life goals? What are my dreams? Now that you're home, locked in with the COVID crisis, this is a very good time to reflect on these big questions. So when you start reflecting on these questions, start asking yourself, what are my good qualities? What are my greatest qualities? How do I stand out? And here I'm talking about your personality, your character, your traits. Are you compassionate? Are you persistent? Are you optimist? Are you kind? What is it that you believe that you have that will make you a good doctor? And now you start thinking, where have you demonstrated these qualities? This is a time of self-reflection and it's not easy. It's very hard for anyone to do. The personal statement, even when you apply for a professional job, when you finish medical school, it's a hard thing to do. As you reflect, think inwards on yourself and you say, who am I? I'm driven to do what? I believe in what? I have learned what? What are your most passionate interests and concerns? How did these interests develop? And then you say, well, what mistakes have I, have I had in my life? And what did they teach me? What was important about them? What ideas, books, courses, what had, what had an impact on me? Start defining what made you. And how do your interests and all of these items relate to your goal to becoming a doctor? And how do all of these things relate to your interest to applying to medical school? and specifically to the medical school that you're applying, for example, European University Cyprus. Some additional things for some of you who've had experiences is if you've had any learning experiences that affected your professional development. This could be research, clinical experiences. I know a lot of you have tried to volunteer and do things. And how did these reflect on your academic choices? Why did you choose to do things? How did these prepare you for a future career in medicine. And then as you consider all of these questions, which are not easy to do, and you start taking notes for yourself, ask, how does this make me unique? Because if you don't know what's unique about you, you certainly can't write it and you cannot support it in the interview. What makes the things that you've done significant? Why is it significant for becoming a doctor? And then after you've pondered on all of these things and you've done your soul searching and you understand your best character, you understand your qualities, you understand the things that made you who you are, as you write your application for medical school, as you apply, for example, European University of Cyprus, then you have three big questions to ask. Why did you choose our program? Meaning, what is it about our program that you know it's the right choice. For example, at European University Cyprus, at our School of Medicine, we focus a lot on skills and competency. You know that by the fourth year, you're able to do most clinical skills. Is this something that is related to your own interests? How do you relate what you've done with what we do? Right now, we have students that are volunteering, that are working in the hospitals during the COVID crisis. Do you have an innate, need and want to help others in crisis, relate it to something that you know that the school is doing. Show that you've done your homework. What about the process of writing? Now the process of writing, you only start after you've done your soul searching and you've answered a few questions about who you are. 
So now our question is, how do I write an effective personal statement? I'm gonna give you a few steps, about seven, one by one so you can follow. First step, after you've done all your soul searching and you have some ideas, is make a list of your most important experiences, the things that you feel that have played the biggest role in your life. This can be anything, extracurricular, class, volunteer work, research, anything. What affected you the most? Now, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice. Don't go too personal here. Um, you know, illness in a family or some trouble. We hear it a lot. Uh, it becomes a little cliche and uh, it doesn't allow you to be very professional, you become more sent sentimental. Avoid it if you can. Once you've chosen your, you've written out your experiences, all of these big things, choose one. Put your pencil on one experience and say, okay, this is the experience that I'm going to use to write my personal statement. Choose one, however, that demonstrates your best strength. Remember that list in the beginning that we were talking about your characters, your personality, curious, dedication, you can handle pressure, you're a team player, you're a leader, what it is, something that's related to being a good doctor. Look at your list that you made in the beginning of your greatest qualities. So choose a good experience that demonstrates one of your strengths and what you consider your best strength. Now you can start writing your draft. You see that that draft, that first draft, comes a long time after a lot of thinking. As you start writing this draft, make yourself be specific. Don't start giving a lot of details and bogging it down with little things that nobody's going to pay attention to. Use your draft to start making a succinct, a brief, a true story that demonstrates your character, your motivations, who you are. Now this draft should have about five paragraphs. That's why we say it's about a page to two pages. These five paragraphs, you discuss five different things. Discuss why you pursued the experience or what the experience is. How did it make you feel? What did it mean to you, in other words? Describe what you accomplished and learned from this experience. Here you have to be really succinct, you have to be clear. What did you learn from whatever it is that you experienced? How did it affect you? And finally, how did it influence your decision to pursue medicine? Not so easy to do. So you define your qualities, you list all of your experiences that you think are good. You choose one experience that is allowing you to focus on one of your good qualities, one of your strengths, and you start to write it out. And you need to give a good story so we can understand who you are. Now, once you've written that draft, we are finding that it's really good if you put it aside. When you work on something over and over and it's sort of deep and you're thinking about yourself and you're not sure how you're gonna do it, uh, you kind of get lost in the details. After you've made your draft, stick it to the side, leave it away a few days, a week, or longer if you have the time, and then reread it with fresh eyes. And be honest, what works there and what doesn't work? What doesn't work, get rid of. Do you see any cliches? Get rid of those for sure. Is there something that's unspecific? Make it specific. And ask yourself a very important question. If I gave it to somebody to read and they don't know me, would they get a sense of who I am? Would they get a sense of my character? Would they understand why I want to study medicine? And would they understand why I think I would be good at medicine? Step five. As you've made your draft and now you think it's got everything in there and you start revising and you revise again and you revise again. You revise over and over ad nauseum. Cut it down each time, tighten it, make each point clear, 
cut out sentences that seem not to be needed. Use active voice as much as you can, become a part of this. And if it doesn't seem right, this is the time to get rid of it, to ditch it and start over. If something doesn't click, if you're not happy with it for the smallest reason, get rid of it and try again. The last step is when you finally think you've got everything down, you've revised it, you've rewritten it, you've tightened it, you've gotten rid of all of the unnecessary stuff, is give it to somebody to read. One or two people. Um, I would avoid giving it to too many because you're gonna hear too many different uh, comments, too many different opinions, and you're gonna become overwhelmed and even worried about it. Get their feedback, use their feedback, and revise again. And finally, the last step, which I think makes sense, but you would be surprised how many people forget to do that, is just do a careful review at the end for any grammatical errors, for any typos, for any repetitions, just to make it clear. So you've written your draft. I'd like to give you just a couple, three tips about what to consider when you're writing the draft. Because writing the draft, I just told you the process, seven steps from the beginning to the end, after you've done all of your soul searching and you know you've thought about, about you, what makes you a good candidate for medical school. There are four things when you're writing your draft, four things when you're writing your personal statement that must come out. It must show in there someplace. These are the things we're looking for. How you developed your interest in becoming a medical doctor, how you developed your interest in medicine, what you consider your strengths, what you consider unique about you, something about your future career goal that is a focus on what it is about medicine that attracts you, and how you fit into the program, how you fit in to for example, European University Cyprus that you're applying. So as you give your story, as you define everything that we just spoke about, as you say about your experience and your quality, da, 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 you need to tie it in to these four points. Let's look at these four points. Tip one, how did you develop your interest? No matter what the experience is, you have to tie it in to your interest in medicine. How and when did the interest develop? This is something we must understand after we've read your personal statement. How much have you pursued this interest so far? Where are you? What, what's happening? Did you have any role models? Did you have any influences? We need to have a clear picture of what this experience is and how it helped you decide on medicine. Now, when you're doing this part, consider some specific experiences that helped you explore and identify medicine as an interest. This will help demonstrate your commitment to us. This will help us understand your focus and your motivation, very critical things that we look for. What insight did you gain about yourself? This lets us know that you have the ability to reflect for critical thinking. It also gives us a sense of how you relate yourself to the profession. And this will allow us to see how you feel that our program will help contribute to your interest in the future. Tip two, talk about you as a person. Don't make it abstract and about somebody over there. You're talking about you. So you need to give us your personal background. You need to give us things that distinguish you. What strengths do you bring to medicine? What strengths will you bring to our medical school? What do your experiences and choices say about your values, your interests, your motivators? You need to give us a feel. This is all about you. No matter how good your grades are, no matter how good your process is, we need to see that you're the right type of person, the right character to study medicine. And this is our first step. This is what gets you in the door to the interview. Address your future career goals. I'm not talking that you need to know what specialty you want to do, but it shows that you've thought it through, that you understand what medicine is all about. Understand that you, you have a feeling for the weight of the profession that you're doing. 
if there's something about the program that is appealing to you in relation to this, if you're interested in research or whatever, this is a point within a few short lines that you give us a feel that, you know, you've thought it through. It's, I don't want to be a doctor simply because it's nice to be a doctor, but you know what you're getting into. And if you saw the interview webinar last week, which you're welcome to get into the university website and re-see, it talks about understanding what the future is, understanding what it means to be a medical doctor. And finally, I'll guarantee you that no matter what admissions committee you look for, and especially at European University Cyprus, we want to know that you fit in and we fit in with your goals. So that means you have to have done your homework. What is the program about? How does the program function? Research it. Look it up. For example, if you're applying to us, to European University Cyprus, you know that we're competency-based. You know that we're skills-based. You know that we use a lot of simulation. Somehow address some component of that in your, in your personal statement. If there's something about our service, something about what we do in the community, address it. Show us not just that you're going to make a good doctor, not just that you're a good qualified student, but you will be a good student who is a good candidate and qualified to study in our program. Why should I choose you to become a student member of our faculty? Why? Show me that you need to be there, that you belong there. Generally, you need to say the why and the when you decided on medicine. Connect to your personal narrative. Put it in. In your narrative, give us a feel for why, when, what was the experience. Share meaningful contributions. Tell us why we should select you as a candidate and not one of the hundreds of others that have applied. Some other generalities. Don't be negative. Avoid some red flags, controversial topics. This is a formal process, so we do not use informal language. Show your personal value as a candidate. Give us a feel for who you are. We want you to be personal in your voice. We want to show active voice, but you also need to do it with professionalism. And make sure the length is not too long. This is the do's and the don'ts list. Some do's, these are the things that we've been saying all along. Give yourself plenty of time to write. Give it a theme, a thesis, meaning use one of your experiences to make your story. Use concrete examples. Write about something that excites you. If it doesn't excite you, it doesn't mean something for you, it's not going to excite us and it's not going to mean anything for us. The experience that you describe should be part of your journey, your personal journey towards becoming or wanting to become a doctor, your personal journey towards your commitment to medicine. Be, show it an active process. Don't use passive language in there. Be humble, but be confident. The don'ts. One thing that you should not do is make an, autobi an autobiography. Don't make a list of a billion things that you've done and just say, I did this at this age, I did that at that age, I went on here, I went on there. It's the worst thing to do. Avoid, again, I'm saying any controversial topics. Don't add in things that don't make sense, that don't belong there, that come in out of left field, that don't add to your statement. Um, this is not creative writing. We don't add funny quotes that you don't understand exactly what they mean, or we don't write in an over-glorifying manner about ourselves, and we certainly don't make up things. Be humble about what you write. Don't talk about hyperbole. When you talk about passion, we don't want to see saying, I am passionate. You need to show us that you're passionate by the things that you've done. Don't be too sentimental. You need to sound professional. Please avoid jargon, abbreviations, and any slang, or qualifiers like it was really great, very this, uh, interesting. 
and um, try to avoid using words that you don't know what they mean. Uh, always we use the personal statement to do our interviews. And when we see things that are kind of out there, we will ask questions. And we usually end up understanding that either you didn't write it or you used words that you weren't familiar with. It's very important that you write it, that you as the candidate write it and not somebody helping you. It's a different thing for somebody to review it and give you suggestions. But in the interview process, it always comes out that we understand if you wrote it or not. It is you on paper. And of course, finally, I'm saying again, avoid cliches. Now I'm going to give you the bad list, the things that you must avoid at all costs. Please avoid, avoid any irrelevant sob stories. Spelling and grammatical mistakes are red flags. Repeating yourself over and over or not being able to make up your mind. Maybe I want to do this. Maybe I don't know about that. Any lies or excuses? Too much, too little? Smiley faces and lol? We've seen them. The other bad list are the most common cliches. We have been doing this for a long time and we have read so many personal statements. And I'm gonna give you a few of the most overused opening sentences of personal statements so that you can avoid it. From a very young age, I've always been interested in. From an early age, I've always been interested in. For as long as I remember, I have been fascinated with. When I was a child, an event changed the course of my life. Medicine is a profession I've always looked upon with blah, blah, blah. Medicine is a very challenging and demanding career. For as long as I can remember, I have always been interested in. Academically, I have always been very determined and actually, we have a list of about 30, 40 opening phrases that we've seen dozens and dozens and dozens of times. This is why you need to prepare, do your homework, think about yourself, reflect, so you can talk about you. Talk about you with the passion of the things that you've experienced. A couple items about cosmetics, not much. This should be typed and printed. It should write it on your computer and print it. We have received handwritten um, statements and I think it's clear that we weren't very pleased with that. Also, you send it in the language of the school that you're applying. So if you're applying to European University Cyprus, your personal statement should be in English. Try to use a common typeface. 11, 12 point font is the most common. The styles that are the easiest on the eyes to read are the serif or the sans serif, that is the Times New Roman or Arial or maybe even Calibri. These are the roundest and the easiest uh, to read. Don't use weird fonts, please you know, cursives and upside downs and whatever. We often like to use um, some sort of um, typeface to show organization, like a bold or an italic or an underline or in all caps, this is okay. Just don't use them all. Use them sparingly to highlight something that you want us to pay attention to. Please use a header or footer. We need to know your name. Okay, and the page number, if it's more than one page, make sure your name is on everything and a page number, and please avoid using colors. It doesn't show that you're being very professional. And finally, please proofread. Check your spelling, your punctuation, errors, give it to people to read, check, draft, redraft, check again, and so on and so forth. This is you on a paper. The whole idea of what we were saying is how to write a personal statement that helps you stand out from the crowd. For you to stand out in the crowd, you need to know who you are so you can write about it. I believe we've given you some general advices. Um, if we were gonna wrap it up, we would say, of course, you should start early. You need to be yourself so we can understand who you are. You need to be specific. 
rather than vague. Talk about specific experiences, specifically what it meant to you. Reflect specifically on specific qualities that you have. Please, please, please do not use cliches. Passion is a given. You have to show it. Can't tell us. If we don't see it in the words, if we don't see it in what you've experienced, it's not there. Be coherent, be concise, be positive, be realistic, and be professional. Now I'm showing this again as good luck, but I think that you've seen that it's not about luck. It's about really thinking it through and preparing. It's about knowing what you need to do. The same thing was true with the interview. The interview and the personal statement are two steps of getting your foot into medical school. Two steps that are very critical in becoming a medical doctor. And actually, there's not a lot of luck there. It's a lot of preparation. 